Okay, guys, so we know we're just going to actually just kind of set up the stations because we need the students to actually cut, fabricate, chop. I know you all got a deadline to meet, but we got to make them meet the deadline. Okay. Guys, the hat should be down on your forehead, okay? It's a great opportunity for the kids. Um, you know, we have something very similar at Crossman. So our kids are exposed to this, this type of cooking. But for them to see it in a college setting, in a bigger setting, working with other chefs than just myself, I think it's an incredible opportunity for them. They, I've never seen them this excited in a long time. They're using your math, using your science. Anytime you bake, you're going to find that you're using chemistry. We talk about chicken roulade and chicken column blue, or chicken French. Look at all the French terms that you guys are using, and you don't even realize it. You got to make sure you're creative, you got to keep their attention, but at the same exact time, their expectation, you have to raise that a lot higher. Anytime I say shuffleboard, that means you stop, okay? You're not sure, you turn to an instructor or that team person. Everybody got it? Yeah. Cool. Today we'll be working with cold food and also we'll be doing the roll in here. We got two of our student chefs that will be overseeing what you guys are doing. You guys are doing the work. They here just to assist you guys. Now keep in mind, because we have a large group, we should be able to bang this out. I'm gonna add a couple of other items to the menu. So we're gonna do wingettes. We're gonna do some chicken fingers. We're gonna make some different types of sauce. We're gonna throw down, guys, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Follow me. I'm about to look at the menu, so y'all can know where I'm at. Is that you need to check out? Looking for a bowl to put our sauce in. We're gonna try this one. This one is too small, and I like this. Me too. Get it as small as you can get it. And you want it to be one of those things where you don't, you taste it, but you don't see it. That'd be easier. Rice for real, except for this part. Yeah, you can take that off and just cut off that little piece of fat right there. Mm -hmm. And the rest is good. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to put it in that pan. If we take a look at the chicken, by it being uniform, you're going to find that it's going to cook evenly. If that right here is thick and you don't tenderize it, what's going to happen? This right here is going to be raw and that's going to be cooked. Mm -hmm. So that technique of tenderizing and flattening out, you're going to find that it's going to give a uniform cooking. That's the most critical part. Then after we get finished doing that, we're gonna go ahead and season it up. I learned that going in a circular motion when you season the chicken and mixing it up is easy by stirring the bowl, twisting the bowl around. That's easier, it makes your whole job easier. Okay, now what are you doing? What is that called? Deva what is that called? Devating the shrimp. Right. All, all you're gonna do is cut, make a little cut at the bottom or at the top and you're gonna pull the vein out. Okay, so this is gonna be used also for your stuffing? Yes. Okay, very good, do an excellent job. Taking the vein out. That's the hardest part. Yeah, see, you could you gotta Cutting find it, it. You gotta find it. This oh. one's put the done ones, right? Uh huh. Okay. I think this will do. You know, this is one of the reasons why I like school. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Out of all the other vocational classes, yeah, I picked culinary, man. I love this. I love doing this. <laughs> I'm going to be a chef when I do it. Me too. Me too. Mm -hmm. Is this bacon? You ready? I'm putting the rice on top of the chicken. Then I'm getting three pieces of shrimp. Then I roll them up. All right, we got to keep moving. We got like chicken. This is what just dropping these. Tying the ends real tight, tuck them under. So when they cook, they come out nice and fine and not loose. Can you wrap it up? Yeah, wrap it up. Normally, whenever I do poultry, whether it's turkey, chicken, duck, whatever, I always like to add sage because sage always brings out the flavor in poultry. Now, we can do this one of two ways. We can actually marinate the tenderloins as they are, okay, in a larger bowl. We can put all kinds of stuff in it. Or, what we can do is we can actually season the flour. Um, I was exactly the chef. I'm like the boss, I'm like, I made the menu up with the sous chef. Shrimp and lobster bisque, flank teriyaki steak, served with mushroom gravy, vegetable medley made with broccoli, carrots, tomato, and zucchini, chicken pilaf wrapped with rice, sauteed shrimp and carrots, roast chicken and velate sauce, and Italian potato salad. 
I put everything on the table so y'all can start on the potato salad. A little bit at a time. He said put the black pepper in it, right? It's, it's sweet. You put sugar in it, olive oil, Italian seasoning, pepper, vinegar. How much pepper do you want? Today you guys with a couple of sauce, so somebody made barbecue sauce, you know? What about the mother sauce? Somebody gave me the mother sauce. Oh, go ahead. Hollandaise, go ahead. Volute, go ahead. Bechamel, go ahead. Espanol. Give me another one. What about that? Red? What color is this right here? Tomato sauce. Red. I said tomato sauce. They call those the mother sauce. I get like the floor pads on like where the food's gonna go out there. Get everything in place. Everything set up out here for them to sit down and eat. You come over here, Zach and Chef. You running the show. You over here, okay? Um, once the executive chef give you directions, you gotta follow the direction. If not, it become chaos. It was fun that I was in charge, but it was too much. Yes. It was like too much stress. Oh my god. I didn't know what I was doing myself and do. So today what's gonna happen, I'm gonna turn over thing, everything over to um, our student executive chef and sous chef, and they're gonna explain the menu. Yeah. We have the chicken, pilau. It has uh, rice in it, and the rice is sautéed with the shrimps and the carrots and the velouté sauce, which is going to be served with the chicken. Anybody have any questions for me? Yeah. So you need to find about four people to wipe down the table real quickly. That's and there. then we need to make sure everything is lined up on the table and we'll be ready to go. Shuffle boys! You're absolutely quiet when I speak, ladies and gentlemen. Keep in mind, as the executive chef, the executive chef got to always have complete, complete control of his area. At this time, I'm going to ask the staff to come through quickly. I will serve and take care of you. It turned out good. Everybody's happy and eating. It was delicious. Oh, I enjoyed it. They were very enthusiastic and willing to learn. We made lobster and shrimp bits. And it's a very difficult dish to make. Very, a lot of stages to do to, to it. We had fun on the trip. You know, learned how to cook. I really enjoyed this More. experience. We go through a lobster dish that we never cooked before in our kitchen, so it was a good experience. The students are always excited about coming here to the college. Some of the teacher asked, how do we have control of the students? You have to be organized, you have to be creative, and as long as you create it and keep the students' attention, you will always have control. And that's the reason why this is the first time they come in here to Prince George Community College, and they're doing extremely well because there's a sense of direction, there's a sense of organization. So it's a great program. Chef Whitfield is the mastermind behind it all. I'm really trying to learn everything I need. This is one of the students that I just had a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I was trying to tell him that he got to push himself a lot more, and there was a little resistance. But now you can see the difference that now that he's a mentor to these high school students, he stepped up to the plate and he took control of the situation. And a lot of times you don't see the development of a student. Today is a good example of how you can see the development and the growth. He was very confident in what he was doing. But not only confident, he was able to show his expertise or his skills to a group of students. How do you feel today, Chef? I feel great. I feel great. I feel like I actually taught someone how to do something they can actually leave here today and go teach someone else how to do it. I'm so happy that the kids come over to our culinary arts program in Prince George's Community College. We're just a student, but in the meantime, we can be the teacher for the kids. So I'm so happy. That's what I feel today. Last semester, this was one of the students who said that they could not do it. They was afraid to do it, and they couldn't lead a group of people. In the meantime, you need to measure out. Now she comes in, she directs them, she takes control. So you're going to find that culinary arts, what it does, it builds your confidence as well, and it teaches you how to organize and how to put things together. And she's a good example of that. I want to study culinary arts. I'll probably start at PG. Yeah, I'm going to start at PG. It's over. So this thing about a four-year degree, you're looking at almost $87,000 at a private institution, at a university. But you take a look at coming to a community college, you're going to pay one-fourth the money. You get the same quality education, it's a accredited program, and then you transfer to a four-year institution. So you got to be able to save money. You know, right now, things can be quite critical.